Welcome back to Mon Out of Creation. This is episode number nine, and you are listening to a very cool episode that I got planned because I'm interviewing a friend of mine, a really good friend of mine, who is involved in the great work and just uh, providing more consciousness, expansion, and awareness, truth, and love to humanity at this crucial time. And um, his name is Corey. Andrelot of Nature is the Answer, Nita.1. Um, very, very cool guy. I met him through uh, What on Earth is Happening, a Mark Passio, Mark Passio's show. And um, I met him through the Discord community for What on Earth is Happening about, I want to say, two months ago. And it's really beautiful, honestly, because... Uh, you know, at the time, things were getting really heated with just the energy on the planet and what's going on geopolitically and with people's personal lives. And the world was just, you know, burning. And most truthers were getting frustrated with people who wouldn't listen. Um, they were getting frustrated with people who weren't receptive to reality. They were frustrated with, um, obviously, the dark occult. Um, the fallen angelics, you know, everything going on, you know, the control system and then people who aren't a part of the control system not acknowledging um, the slavery that we're under and the, you know, just the tr the tragedy of what's going on. And at the time, uh, I had a few friends who could, you know, sift through it and exist and just keep their head up and, you know, keep going and keep teaching and live in the world and not of it. But uh, not not many, you know what I mean? And especially within certain communities, people were just a little distraught, which is natural. It's, it's totally natural to get distraught and discouraged. And um, it makes sense, right? So when I met Corey, his vibe was super awesome. Nature's the answer. Super rad um, take on the great work. And it's sort of like the new We Are, uh, we are Change movement. Um, and like the 9-11 Truth movement. But it's based around nature and natural universal principles. And really awesome inherent solutions that every human could agree with no matter if you're an orthodox christian uh, a muslim or you know an esoteric light occultist or a scientific atheist who loves environment like nature is the answer could apply to everyone and then the dude running it happens to be super awesome and rad and uh yeah so Corey, welcome to the show and it's super awesome to talk to you uh, if you want to say something about your work to clarify a little bit, introduce yourself, uh, nature's the answer and everything, um, then I can ask you some questions about what got you started with the great work and just, you know, helping others and just being a genuine, a genuine person and realizing that we're in an upside down world and you got to do something about it. Well, hello. I thank you for having me here in the first place. That means a lot. I've been following your Instagram for a while and I know that you have been doing a lot of work in trying to teach this information to others. So for that, you deserve a thank you as well. And so I want to thank you, first of all. And yes, my name is Corey Angelot. Uh, the website is Nita.1. Um, so that's what he meant when he said that. And that stands for Nature is the Answer. So it's N-I-T-A dot O-N-E. And I have a lot of resources on there for individuals who want to explore different concepts, for which I would hope that anybody that listens to this uh, has an open mind to the information. And perhaps in this time of the podcast, if people have been listening to the previous ones, uh, they would have an open mind to a lot of different concepts and perhaps already have learned a lot of great wisdom from you, um, on out of creation. I think you've done a lot of great work. So I just wanted to put that out in the fir firmest, you know? Um, Thank and you, and when you were talking about like different religions and different people coming together, I think that would sort of be the whole way to sum up everything that I've been working on lately is how do we bring people together in this understanding of universal principles? So there's certain things we can focus on. There's certain topics we can talk about, but there's also what binds us all innately as human beings, what we all relate to, what we all can connect to and create a greater harmonization in within our own lives and natural law is just that but it can also be really easily um referred to as cause and effect and the golden rule which is why so many religions can relate to it is because the golden rule is taught through 
all top 13 of the most major religions. And all those religions were also created for a reason. Therefore, if we understand the cause to the very uh, religions themselves, and we understand its effects on individuals and what a religion actually means in its actual definition as well, we can probably just learn from all those in general, regardless of even what those religions say. Uh, because the very nature of those things can actually detail much more than anything that comes of it. It's like asking the why upon the how. So when I ask for the nature of something, or I'm looking at the nature of something, it's not just looking at things through the natural lens. It's trying to get to the root of things. And so nature is a very applicable word, which is why I say it, it is the answer. And, and the word answer can also... Um, basically be equivalent to the word correspondence. And as you may know, the principle of correspondence is uh, a phenomena within natural law. So if we connect these ideas together and we have an open mind, we can do a lot in this world with helping individuals understand the bigger picture within their own lives. But then more to that, how do we apply it within their own lives? And that is key because natural law is also called the law of attraction. And so if we want to attract good things to our lives, well, how do we attract those good things? We have to know the requirements to those good things. Those requirements are necessary. They're not going to happen magically. There's actual requirements that are needed for those conditions to be set up and for the environments to help manifest that desired condition. So it's a process and it's one that doesn't isn't fast so individuals should take their time you know take deep breaths relax go through this process and that's why such an integral effort as your own where you're taking people you know step by step through this knowledge through this wisdom of natural law and philosophy essentially it's what it is it really helps um sink in everything and allow individuals to do their own exploration, right? Because we're not t to tell people what to do. We're just fellow guides. We're fellow teachers. And so you said it best when you said, well, there's many different teachers here teaching this subject. And perhaps I'm one of them. I don't know. I'm just doing my best as a human being. I'm just trying to live my best. And right. what would be the best to live as a human being? Well, it would help if I knew what was right and wrong. And what natural law really is at the heart of things is really helping us determine morality, right? What is right? What is wrong? Not necessarily what is right and what is left, like politically, it has nothing to do with such. It has to do with what is objectively inherently right and wrong, which to some individuals may not think exists. And to them, that would then classify as moral relativism a component of Satanism, which I encourage individuals to look up if they don't know what that is. So morality is key here, because if we know what is moral and what is immoral, we can then choose our actions thereof. So when I said harmonization of natural law and living in abidance to it, it would be through first the understanding of it. So that's why nature is the answer as sort of this blueprint as movement, as mission, as message, is to for us to be as messengers, to correspond and be the change ourselves for the change we want to see in the outer world, the microcosm for the macrocosm. And therefore, it starts with conversation. And really, conversation is really key to the process. There's not much more, and many individuals want to take some extreme measures, but conversation really does it. And so a conversation such as this, a podcast, can make a big difference depending on what the individual chooses to do with this information. And so I consider the work I do not just information, but transformation, because we're constantly asking the question, how could we apply this to our life and what actions could we specifically take? Right. And so through the course of my material, I encourage that conversation and I encourage people go out of their way, not just online, but in real life and in small little efforts because they do add up on the grand scheme of things, especially if we can just influence the people around us or in our neighborhoods. And if we all did that, then the change would happen quite naturally. And we'd have this integration with one another and with these concepts that are universal, that are here to unite around in the first place. And then that would call for a natural disintegration from the systems that do not belong because we understand where we belong. We understand what belongs because we have learned from nature itself, the true teacher, the true healer. 
Right on, man. That is awesome. Uh, round of applause, honestly. That was great. It's so cool to he- hear another uh, person uh, describe the you know the nat- natural law and the objective morality and God's law, law, true law of one principle, so cohesively and seamlessly. Uh, it's pre- it's pretty awesome, and I'm excited to have this conversation. So I guess um, what I would ask next for uh, the next questions would be: At what point um, did you realize how integral and um, you know, just how completely a part of existence and reality natural law principles are to existing in this realm. And also, not only when it really clicked for you of how essential it is, but did you feel this way your whole life? Sort of, you know, deep down, like you sort of had this this intu- intuitive sense that these principles without knowing what they were, without having a name, without having anything, was it just, you know, right. just within you, your whole, your whole life? Was it, has, have these always been a part of you? And then once you heard them described throughout different traditions, and then obviously um, natural law, like through what on earth is happening, uh, was it just, you know, a gnosis experience, you know, just how it is described in certain folklore tales, things like that? Like, at what point did it really click for you, and did it always feel inherent growing up? Right. I think there's three words for this. There is attraction, synchronicity, and there's mirroring. So attraction, synchronicity, and mirroring. And what I mean by that is it's sort of an intuition standpoint uh, where you are attracting everything that comes into a world. But no, of course, I did not expect to end up where I am and understand the concepts that I understand. Um, what natural law really does is put these ideas on, on writing, right? It puts it onto a format that we can then deliver to other individuals and create a, ba- a greater understanding of. But most individuals who have looked into it perhaps may agree that sort of we already live the natural law because it is the natural law. So regardless of whether we accept it or not, it's always existent. And so it's something that we all have deep down inside and we all have some relationship to. So coming across what on earth is happening, for example, you use that as an example, I found a relevance within myself um, with that information. However, it is something that can also be toned down to common sense or greater conscious awakening. So one who understands and observes the world may already understand some aspects of the natural law without even realizing it. But the natural law really puts it down into a format to where it is all one big compendium of knowledge. And that is the beautiful thing about it and where we can deliver it to any individual at any stage of time. Yes, indeed, even children. Um, just in the format that would be readily available for them. And that's where the transformation comes into play, is how you deliver that. So if this is based on morality, based on common sense, I would hope most individuals would want to teach their children such concepts, because you would know whether you should, you know, the chicken walks walks across the street. You know, if you, you should know if you should walk across the street, if there's traffic and you know, there's cars that are going to potentially hit you. You should know if you're going to jump off a cliff, what's going to happen to you. <laughs> Simple things like that, um, we would say is common sense or conscience, which is to know together. Um, but unfortunately, the whole world doesn't always have those general understandings, even though you would hope they would. And that's what we find ourselves running into when we really study natural law, if it's based on common sense, is you're finding these simple truths that surprise you and how most of the public do not really see this yet they live it all the time all throughout and hence why a lot of individuals talk about presence and staying focused among what is current and what is always happening so that way they may be more aware or conscious of what is happening and then they are able to identify it recognize it and then from there of course put their actions based on their observations Sort of like the scientific method, but best also described in the trivium or the quadrivium, 
where our mind sets the stage uh, for the actions thereafter. And it is a heart connection, right? So I had a very loving family growing up. So I really had a lot of these ideas of wanting to do good in the world. But they were often twisted with this idea that obeying authority equivalated to that of morality. And legality is not morality, is a phrase I like to say. Because you cannot say that an opinion of somebody or belief is that of the truth. And what, what is objectively inherently right is that of which does not cause harm to other individuals. And the problem with belief and authority, as we have looked at, if we want to look at the nature of statism or the nature of authority, is that we're putting our self-responsibility, our own human nature, in someone else's hands. We're sort of giving away this part of our own nature into someone else's to which they might not actually even have the right to in their nature. And that's what we're looking at, is when we can observe law, real law, natural law, we can then observe natural rights. And so we can then determine, based on knowing also our rights, what right and wrong is. That's why we're losing our rights, is because we don't know what our right and wrong is. These words are designed like that on such a fashion on purpose, and our ancients had a lot of knowledge that we perhaps shouldn't underestimate for they would study the skies, they would contemplate, they would meditate, they would be more present, they weren't bombarded by distractions or technology necessarily, and now maybe you're listening to this podcast and you're doing something else in the meanwhile, but at least you're taking this time to understand new information, at least you're embarking on a journey that a lot of individuals aren't even willing to embark on in the first place. And so that's really what helped me delve further into these studies was the effort and the care to do so. I cared about the other individuals. I cared about what was going on in the world. I cared about particularly the natural world, as you may be able to tell. And I could see that the natural world, not just within the body when it comes to health, but the natural world as a whole is not just being attacked by man. It's the very nature of everything that is being compromised on some level or detached from its original reality. Therefore, I would deem it as denaturing. So while one person may say, well, this is the problem to the world, this is the problem to the world, ultimately I would say denaturing is the greatest problem on this world, and statism just happens to be the biggest factor causing that denaturing on this planet. So it's, it's an understanding process, and it took me time. It took me ups and downs. It took me emotional breakdowns. It's, it's something that every individual goes through on their own basis, but it's a discovery process. And so I, t I treat it as such. It's a journey, right? I'm going through Middle Earth and I'm putting the ring into the fire, but I can't do it alone either. I need to have a fellowship with me. And that's why we're all fellow messengers in Nature's the Answer is we're, we're all fellow messengers. We all have something to give. This isn't a one-person job. Now, although some are more um, attuned to do this work more than others because they have more effort, more care, more environments that suit them up to do so, perhaps you may say, attractions that allow pre-existing conditions to manifest moreover, we're all here in this life. We all have this law. And so that's why it's essential for myself to understand and my, essential for my teachings of it is because it's about us all. It's not about one select few individuals or one select country. It's about the whole earth. And just that within itself is an open mind perspective that we don't hear often. We hear in elections, it's about this country, that country, that government, that government. Just that within itself is not open minded enough. Because if it was open minded enough, it would expand even past the realm of what we call earth. And an, an open heart is an open mind, right? So it really tells you the state of our world. Do we care? Do we have a heart? If we're so constricted in the mind, and the mind tells us what to do, and the heart helps guide one another in sharing, in knowing together, like I said, which then relates back to the idea of common sense. 
which is why natural law is also important because it talks about common sense, but also morality. So knowing what is right. And those who don't care about doing what is right, well, they probably not care that much about natural law. And they might care a lot more about man's law because it's based on these short-term opinions of man that has no relationship to nature, which is sort of self-degrading to their own nature because it's suppressing themselves, like I mentioned. They're giving it away to a, a foreign entity that has no right to do so. And so it's about understanding those very concepts, like I mentioned, which really help bridge whole new avenues for individuals. And so I can keep going on and on about different ideas and then tackle different ideas upon that. And when you really start to open your eyes, you start to see so much more to where, I guess, you start to alienate yourself from the modern crowd if there is so much deception present within the modern world. So we do have to be careful with that if we want to appeal to individuals and help them understand this world is we need to reach down to their level. And that's why I said it's good that you are teaching this in, in different intervals where you are breaking it down step by step. And sort of just to answer your question as a whole, it's just a journey. And it's a journey that we're all in. And you are here listening to this for a reason. You know, I'm here speaking this knowledge for a reason. And I can admit that I don't know everything. And that's part of this truth that we have to understand is the fact that we aren't nature. We aren't God. But we can work with nature and we can work with God. And the natural law allows us to do so. Right on, man. That's awesome. That was great. Oh, you nailed it, really. Um, I loved the Tolkien allegory. Um, in the last episode on fear, courage, and strength, I actually used Gollum and Gandalf for the two you know, meta metaphorical, allegorical um, devices of telling the importance of those traits. So, uh, it's awesome. Uh, I know you and I could probably talk Tolkien forever. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, you, na you nailed the natural law right there, man. That's awesome. So I've what I want to ask you next is, um, what what um, what do you think about the importance of responsibility of actions, responsibility of self, um, responsibility in general, and how it relates to the world right now, how it relates to uh, relationships on the microcosm and the macrocosm, just responsibility in general in relation to natural law, um, because you know. I know you know it's very important, as do I. But I would I would love to hear what you have, if you have any like unique, you know, personal thoughts, or just tell me straight up what you think about the importance of responsibility. Because everybody is abdicating their responsibility of mind, body, and spirit at every turn. And until we mm -hmm. all start being responsible for our choices to the fullest, and not having you know any any BS or any excuses any weakness really and you know that sounds harsh but it's really just a uh, genuine genuine living um in relationship to each other nature and god and just reality um and i think re the lack of responsibility in, in humanity right now is and the lack of natural law go go directly hand in hand um mm -hmm. i'd love to hear what you have to say about that yeah well i think that's right th this is one of the reasons why there's podcasts such as yours that exists is we have this natural obligation to share it with others, this moral obligation. Therefore, it is no wonder we're talking about morality as well. And it's causing this massive shift in awareness to where a lot of individuals are seeing this change. Um, this is something that is awakening a lot of individuals because of where we stand in the modern world. This can lead to also some extremes uh, on the right brain side where it's of new age dogma. So we do want to be careful with that. But taking responsibility of ourself is something that should be of natural obligation, is what I like to say about it, if you want my more personal view on it. Although I, of course, like to stick by law and principle, stuff that we can relate to. And responsibility is really what all of it comes down to as well. So although I mentioned common sense, although I, I mentioned morality, Without the idea that you're responsible alone for your own actions, those 
ideas don't necessarily come into fruition. It means that you have a impact on this world. You're not as powerless as many way, what modern institutions may make you feel sometimes or certain individuals feel at least. I certainly hope you don't feel powerless because if you recognize the power that you do have and the power that we all have as individuals, it would allow you to think otherwise because we're all one and the same. And those who claim to have a greater power is nothing more than a claim. They never, again, had that right to claim over your life, your property. So the truth is to this idea of responsibility is that you own you and I own myself. And that is a simple truth, yet so often not taught in our education system. And although there are foreshadowing and there is hints to that in, for example, the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution, it is not saying that directly. And although there, uh, they have some foreshadows of a natural law, they did not have the full understanding of the natural law. And certainly the citizenry under that did not. But I would consider America a transition to just more of the conscious awakening that we are starting to see now. Right, This 200 to 300 year cycle that goes on for governments time and time again, as I detailed, like the Titler cycle, the Toynbee cycles. We see this in history. And everything comes down to this level of responsibility is that when one individual gives away their responsibility and when many individuals give away their responsibility, because that's when it really makes the impact here, is that then we start to see there's a small ruling class because they're the ones that everybody else is looking up to as their Lord and Savior to go and change everything for them, right? And so there's centralizing this power, this knowledge, this control into a few, a sort of um, manifesting naturally egotistic system, right? Again, if we were to look at the nature of the system, it's, it's of ego in that sense because we're, we're giving away our responsibility and perhaps, you know, we want government benefits or whatever, so we have some ego in the matter as well or we're straight up ignorant to what is going on, but we're giving it away to a few individuals. And that's where the ego starts to build in a place where it can manifest into war, where it can manifest into mass control, uh, what is considered an external monarchy, right? A, um, and, and what essentially individuals need to understand if they live in America, for example, is that a republic is still a monarchy. Um, and these are also quotes by Plato, by Aristotle themselves, some of the oldest philosophical, uh, philosophical individuals who understood this knowledge. And they didn't, again, understand the full scope of the natural law, but they understood elements thereof, because I mentioned we all are part of that. But we've reached a stage where now we have information at our fingertips where we can see events and observation, where we can see that history has repeated itself. And so now we can really learn at the brink of things more than ever. So for today, we actually have more potential to learn and more potential to be creative, but only if we choose to do so. And so that's the thing with responsibility as well. Are we giving our responsibility away? It is our choice. If you choose to take the responsibility into your own hands, you will find yourself with a destiny. You will find yourself learning. To give away your responsibility is to say, I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to deal with this problem. And so therefore, you're not giving yourself that challenge that the, the world naturally brought upon you. You are pushing your nature aside and you're saying, well, it can go with this individual even though it does not necessarily need to. Now, of course, voluntary exchange is fine. But when mass individuals are giving away their responsibility to a few, and that whole system of res uh, that is receiving this responsibility is immoral and does not rely on voluntary principles, then it's no wonder why, these, why this letting go of personal responsibility results in mass casualty over time. 
And what I mean by that is democide, for example. Look at World War II. Just because those individuals were obedient to whatever government they persisted in, they were deemed as moral. And not only that, they gave away their self-responsibility for the responsibility of a greater cause. A greater cause, though, not of nature. A greater cause, that of ego, that of a centralized system. And, of course, you can refer to that as any of the governments on Earth that participate in that time because they were all complacent and permissing the mass death that was going on. And if individuals took responsibility for their own actions, they wouldn't comply with the actions that they were ordered to take. They would say, it's my responsibility to dictate my own body, to choose what foods I want to put in my own body, to choose what actions I take with this body for the world that happens in manifestation, in occurrence, and again, correspondence. So this is where the microcosm affects the macrocosm. If you were self-responsible and other individuals were self-responsible, the world is actually quite free because nobody is giving away their self-control to a few individuals who can then control over many. So responsibility gives way to control and responsibility teaches us about morality. It teaches us, period. So when we choose to take on a project, right, if we choose to take on a challenge, we choose to take on this journey of bringing that ring to the mountain because you love those analogies <laughs> from Lord of the Rings. That is a responsibility that we're putting on ourselves, no matter how hard it may be, especially in a world like now, to take a responsibility to talk to someone about something that you know is truthful, deep down inside, you know has to get out there to the public. That is an act of courage. That is an act of bravery. That is your heart aligning with your mind, with your gut, because you know what is right. You care enough to know and you care enough to act. The heart is in the center for that reason. The heart centers individuals. It balances individuals. So act out of your heart and you will find yourself being self-responsible. If you act out of your mind, you're going to find yourself going toward ego and belief. And if you act out of only your guts, then you're going to act unconsciously and you're still going to result in a similar extreme cycle where you don't think before you act or you don't care enough to act and you're just acting as. Uh, you're just being, but you're not being of necessarily the nature that sends you messages on a daily basis. Because I do know that everyone that listens to this podcast, especially you know, if they've reached it this far by now, they are somebody who does thinking. They are somebody who asks questions. They are somebody who perhaps looks at the world differently. And that is important to understand, is that we don't want to make ourselves super outcasts, but we do want to help other individuals, ultimately at the end of the day, come to not just our understandings, because that's not about us, remember that, it would be counterintuitive, but to the understandings of the natural world to which we all live under, because only then could we truly be sustainable. And only then could responsibility be of natural obligation for individuals. Right on, man. Nailed it again. Yeah, I mean, right, responsibility is, is the core of it. And if everybody, you know, and to first of all, I want to establish someone who first of all, somehow made it this far into the podcast and the episode and still is uncomfortable with the idea of a totally free society. And they might be afraid of the possibility of chaos, right? Um, and, you know, if there was, if the majority of the aggregate had a foundation in love, truth, morality, uh, natural law, things that became chaotic or if violence happened, um, People who understood self sovereignty and responsibility, they wouldn't. They wouldn't let it fly. You know, they wouldn't that, even rule over their fellow men. They they wouldn't. So so this isn't even an issue. If any if anybody's questioning, you know, they're afraid, they might be afraid of the possibility of chaos. Well, you know, if if the principles were, um, you know, out in the open and understood and integrated 
enough, you know, things really, really wouldn't be that bad. Have an imagination. So what would you say to someone or what do you say? I know you run into this problem as do I all the time. What, what do you typically say to someone when they say, well, what about chaos? There's good, people are just going to kill each other. You know, what's, you know, what's, what typically happens when you run into that situation? Well, I would ask them, right? And as a teacher, it's important to ask questions. So I'd ask them, well, why do they think that? And then I would go from there. And perhaps, you know, if we want to talk about what responses would come from that, then, right, is, well, okay, you think the world is going to end up in chaos <laughs> if there's a free world, even though we already live in a free world, technically, by nature. Mm -hmm. What makes you think that it would be otherwise without a system of control, which by the very nature of that system, it's failed to doom. And by the very law, it is immoral and not supposed to be existent. See, this is why I teach natural laws, because so that way individuals understand not just the, uh, the ideas behind this, right, is to say, well, it's not going to cause chaos, but to understand by principle by law that it actually is intended for the universe of nature. So it's, it's, it's a holistic understanding and it does, it does have to rely on the heart. It does. Um, because the mind is what always is conflicting with one another, always causing divisions. And again, it's always based on belief, which isn't necessarily always aligned with truth. And if it is aligned with truth and you're making it a law, then it's simply already existent. So it would be counterintuitive to pass a law that is already existent within nature. <laughs> and so any law otherwise would then be an opinion of man and man trying to be nature, to which never is sustainable long term and actually results in chaos as way of negative expression. And if you understand negative expression of natural law, then you understand that the whole idea of chaos you know what they want to use that word chaos first comes from this word called fear and fear can only take place especially under under a system where there's the threat of violence and the threat of violence takes place under government uh, and so all the other threats are really just a uh, lack of courage in ourselves um, you know, a lack of a self-doubt. We're reflecting onto the world. We're saying it's going to be chaos. It's because personally, that individual who's saying it's going to be chaos has not done this awakening process for themselves. What I'm saying is that they're sort of projecting. Now, I understand if certain individuals don't understand these concepts, but they wouldn't jump to the assumption that it's chaos then, if that was the case. If they were truly willing to learn, they too would ask questions, just as the teacher would ask questions. And they wouldn't jump to the assumption that all of a sudden a world without statism, I mean, a world without, you know, government, because essentially it's upheld through statism, they, they wouldn't think that uh, that exists. You know, they, they, they just, they can't wrap their brain around it because they never imagine a world with it, without it. And it's sort of this indoctrination that we've been under since birth, essentially. Um, which makes it also very difficult. We see TV ads constantly, people playing these games. We see sports being very similar in the way people root for teams. And it's something that it seems just natural to our living. So it's sort of integrated into our nature. But that does not make it itself of nature. And so that's why there's a very imitative or elusive, uh, illusionary effect that has been cast on to us. Is the illusion of choice, the illusion of freedom, the illusion of order, even though it always results in chaos. No government is sustainable because in the very nature of such, it relies on fear, it relies on confusion, it relies on ignorance because without ignorance, um, there would essentially be individuals who, like we mentioned before, would be self-responsible. Essentially, that means that there wouldn't be the occult knowledge. Knowledge would be with the many instead of with the few that keep it away from the many on purpose, which is why we have um, government institutions and education systems that train us from birth to stay away from universal concepts such as natural law.
even though it is the real law, and which is why they equate the law with man's law automatically to twist your nature and the nature of reality into one that isn't reality. It's putting on the VR headset, the virtual reality headset, and setting that as your whole new reality. You can't tell what is real and what is fake because you've been programmed to have that headset on your whole life to where it is impossible to notice the differences between right and wrong. It is impossible to know that. And you just think everything is just an opinion of somebody else. Everything is just created by man, essentially. And that we we can just be God at the end of the day. Because that's what our education system is teaching individuals is science. And science is not a bad thing. I'm in the health field. I have to know science in order to, to help people. But it doesn't mean I don't understand holistic concepts as well, which means the input of consciousness and the, the spirit of that condition, just the simple mindset, the simple attitude, like I'm going to heal myself, the simple presence, the simple breathing, simple things that go completely ignored by mainstream medicine and the pharmaceutical industries, which just want to profit on dependence which is what government relies on, is your dependence on them. If you understand that the FDA is a business, just as the government is a business, except the government asks for statism as the price, as the currency, whereas uh, the pharmaceutical industry relies on medications, you wouldn't understand that if you put it through that lens, that that government relies on statism to be in business. And essentially then they want you to believe in it as much as possible by all means. Now this may be like you've mentioned, abstract to some individuals, some individuals are going to say, well, this still could be impossible because of this, because of that, because of this. And they'll come up with a whole list of reasons why it isn't going to be possible, why it isn't going to be ethical. But I want you to take a step back and really understand what your nature is. And individuals are like, well, oh, there's chaos in nature. <laughs> Do you expect the world to be a utopia? Is my next question to you. And is there ever an optimal condition for humanity? What would the optimal condition be? Would the optimal condition also be the most sustainable? The one that is most natural or at least in abidance to nature? Because if you haven't studied this idea of natural law or natural medicine, uh, I encourage that you do if you want to have a general rooted idea into this but like i said this could also be just through simple observation we were trained to have this system into our minds that then creates this system externally outside of our minds binding us to the physical world into these constraints that actually limit us in our potential so it's it's something that like i said hard to wrap our brain around and they want it to be like that because that's how they keep their control. When I say they, again, I am referring to these denatured beings because they're in a power position that they shouldn't be in. They're in a position of power which is not natural for them to have. They don't have the right to rule over the fellow men. And like you and I mentioned, anybody more of the right mindset or ones who understand the natural world around them, but understand that, well, we all own ourselves and we wouldn't want to rule over our fellow men. This is nonsense. We can help lead by guidance, lead by teaching, but we're not going to tell someone what to do. That doesn't help the condition. <laughs> you know, are you, are you going to see a teacher tell somebody what to do? Do you think that that child who listens to that teacher is going to end up a, a good student. They're just going to obey due to the pressures being put onto them. They're not going to actually understand the concepts being brought to them. They're just going to obey based on the amount of threat of violence that has been cast upon them. And so I'm looking toward a world where this fear is not present because once you get rid of the fear, you get rid of the chaos. You get rid of the confusion, the ignorance. And then therefore, all the knowledge ma opens up to the masses. And if we all have knowledge, then we all have power. And that power system naturally doesn't exist. So ultimately, that, that question where it's like, oh, well, this will cause chaos. Well, not necessarily. Naturally and of the world, 
the natural transition to reality, to understanding our reality and living in harmony with it, because reality is always present. It's simply our harmonization with it that I seek to achieve in reducing overall harm done to the planet. It relies in bringing that knowledge to many individuals, which is why you and I teach such natural laws, because it's considered a form of knowledge. But I didn't necessarily use all the terminologies of natural law here, because I know that you're going to go through it in other podcasts, and you have, and that we don't need to necessarily have such a view that is always on paper, or always in some sort of format. If we just study the natural world, it gives us hints everywhere that we are naturally wild animals. <laughs> and that doesn't mean we're not orderly. We have a human brain, something a lot of the other animals in the animal species kingdom does not have. And so we're able to tolerate higher order thinking. We're able to make better decisions in our lives. We're able to have the consciousness to understand our actions. And so if we choose to use it, we choose to use our human nature as intended, we will understand that we have rights among our fellow human beings. And that right is that we own ourselves, that everybody is entitled to their own life, liberty and property, pursuit of happiness, that their own body is their own property. And so it's those simple ideas. And if we want the simple things such as love, such as order, such as knowledge, such as family, it's gonna come from those simple things. The simple things are going to give us those simple things. Instead of over-complexifying it and put it, putting it through the system that we like to call government, where everything has to be fixated in a certain way and nothing's ever perfect and it's got to be a utopia, even though you know that's always the vision and there's never ever a sustainable model and it results in millions of people dying annually. You know, If we want to consider, continue that system, then go right ahead, but... The world is always going to resist that because it's not what's intended. What's intended is for coexistence peacefully and voluntarily. And the reason why these, these evil forces exist within the universe is because they were let to be manifested by good people. Good people let it go on. They see their fellow men getting oppressed and suppressed, therefore in the process because of their human nature, and they let it go on. So it's not just that I and you would refuse to rule over our fellow men. We would not tolerate seeing oppression. We would speak up against it. So we would speak up against such leadership, and we would also choose not to be of leadership. We choose to be teachers. We choose to be guides. We choose to help others instead of rule over other them, over them. Right on, man. Beautiful. Yeah, so it's really it's it's such a um, it's such a simple concept, you know, because it's inherent. Um, once you get in touch with yourself, at least to a certain degree, these things become so inherent and just they make sense and a, a part of reality in yourself. So the the thing I've been noticing lately is how as I've developed an integrated natural law and morality. Um, more and more conscientiously over the years, I've noticed how simplified this can sound to someone else. And the levels of receptivity and the levels of willingness and awe and wonder for this type of learning and reality. And, you know, the different levels, you know, the, the worst of it being uh, willing, willing submission, willing slavery, you know, just staying in your box, you know, with your... Whatever it is, whatever the toys you have in this world are, and then the other just, you know, renouncing everything and just absorbing all of all of reality, God, truth, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I know you understand that, and it's su super interesting. So going forward, um, it's we're almost an hour, so I'm going to ask you one last question. You can go as long as you want, but uh, it's sort of a loaded one. In terms of natural law, what I've really come to understand is that the, the main thing about it is to evolve the human species and heal individuals. And obviously that heals the collective and the aggregate. And obviously not collectivism. It's just, you know, unified sovereigns, you know, operating mm -hmm. under the laws of nature and reality. And I see two, almost clear cut two directions we can go in, you know, a more, you know, technocratic, um, technocratic controlling direction 
based off of what we choose to do. And obviously, you know, the other dynamics at play, uh, which are more cosmic in nature and spiritual. And then obviously the natural world that everybody wants, you know, some people are calling it new earth. Some people are just calling it a better world. Uh, mm -hmm. How, how, um, how malleable do you think the path is going forward? Do you think we're heading more towards uh, something, you know, a little more controlling, a little more free? And, uh, and then also uh, recap us on where we can find you, where we can um, get in touch with you, and how people can get involved with NIDA, with Nature is the Answer. Um, yeah. Okay. So to just uh, recuperate real quick then, um, natural law is occult knowledge. So again, if we understand that knowledge, we bring the power back to the people. So when people talk about bringing power back to the people, this actually is doing it because you're literally educating yourself and educating others with the knowledge that is all around us universal that is here for us to actually learn more. You see, the natural law is not truth itself. It helps us find the truth and it helps attract us toward the truth, it helps us learn the truth. It's a learning process, essentially, which is why the trivium and the quadrivium is part of it. And I encourage individuals to look that up because this is all a learning process for every one of us. Like I said, um, we're all on this journey. So um, your question was if we're moving toward more of like a technocratic state or a um, more natural state. And that would be a rather difficult question to understand depending on um, the perspective we take. Because like I said, freedom is all around us. Anarchy is all around us because anarchy essentially just means no rulers. Doesn't mean no rules. Um, which really goes back to the last question um, as well, into saying that it's not necessarily chaos. Nobody ever equated it to chaos. Its Latin definition literally just says no rulers, uh, which just simply equates to freedom. And so anarchy, by definition, is freedom, and anarchy is essentially nature, because nature all around us is free. Uh, and we are the ones who put the barriers on it, again, through way of mind, not through way of heart, necessarily. And what we'd like to do, however, is suppress the heart uh, for the mind. And that way, the mind can take reign over the heart and start to control an ego. And so what this really means is what I say by perspective is you can look at the world as this major control state, or you can look at it as, well, I'm free, but there is a reality to the situation. So depending on how open-minded and how big picture oriented we want to look, yes, we are in a control state now. And so I could speak upon the present. I can't necessarily speak upon the future, but I would hope for individuals to wake up to what is simply all around them present and in nature. Because there is, to my belief, no word more unifying than that of nature. There's no idea more unifying to that of nature. And individuals have been waking up to natural medicine due to the failure of pharmaceutical and artificial medicine. Um, and individuals have been waking up to natural law due to the artificial nature and the imitative illusion nature of man's law. And so... It is no surprise why this awakening is happening, but just because that awakening is happening to some individuals does not mean that everything's going to change. What's really going to bring the change is if those individuals can then teach the other individuals who are in the dark. Again, this is about reducing casualty. No matter what, there's always going to be a karma to this, right? Because natural law is essentially also karma. And so if it's also cause, uh, cause and effect, um, really that will tell what the future is not me i can't tell what the future is and it's going to depend on many different factors but one thing i do know is what will happen if many individuals come together in trying to educate others and when i say come together when i say unify i'm not saying collectivism either i'm saying unification around understanding around recognition of what is simply already here present and all throughout so it is quite that simple in regards, and I use that word simple, but I should probably be careful with it because other individuals are going to intentionally complexify it. And the reason why I say that word so often, though, is because we shouldn't want to complexify things. We should want to live a simple life. 
we shouldn't want all this consumerism. We shouldn't want all these materials ruling over us um, necessarily. And if we do, it's because of some, again, internal reason as to why. And there needs to be some personal change in the process for external worldly change. So essentially, we have to change ourselves in our own communities, in our own neighborhoods, in order to change the world thereafter. And then, like I mentioned when I first started this podcast, is that it becomes a natural process of awakening, where if everybody takes that responsibility into their own hands, uh, where everybody takes that understanding that they are born to have, uh, in, in, in starting to recognize through time, and some people often just learn too late in the process. Many individuals learn from experience, meaning there's death beforehand, there's mass casualty beforehand, which is why there's warnings from people like you and I, and there's warnings from those of the past and the ancients who are warning us of these cycles of government and so forth. If we don't learn from history, we're never going to understand how to make a sustainable model without this mass casualty and, and I, I want to reduce that harm i want to reduce that suffering because again i'm utilizing my heart <laughs> in this process and anybody i guess with a heart would would perhaps say the same thing is that they wouldn't want to see that mass casualty so you can live in your own little fairy tale land where you think that you know this world is beautiful and natural and free because technically it is if you want to set your mind to it especially you will set the stage thereafter and that's a good way to look at the world for sure but the reality of the condition is that most people are enslaved and some people have to go through some very oppressive conditions right now um just look at china just look at different areas of the world do you care for those human beings too and they are limited to certain freedoms and growingly it's becoming more and more freedoms so their nature is being suppressed and if we don't stop that in its in its pattern in its in its way of effect then it's not then nothing's going to change it's about prevention not just treatment and in medicine this is crucial especially since the the modern artificial uh way of medicine is and of course this is like more western medicine more um technocratic medicine as well uh it's it's essentially not really caring at all so negating the heart but also not caring about anything natural or in nature if they were to do so they would listen to the body and understand how the body relates to um, what's going into it and uh not just what 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 drugs they put in the body and letting the drugs do all the work uh, they would listen to what the body naturally has and try to do the least amount of harm as possible by working with the body instead of trying to dictate the body and forcing certain reactions off and blocking certain pathways to create certain reactions. But again, it's never treating the root cause of the problem. It's always treating the symptoms. And our society is often treating the symptoms. So if we want to treat the root cause of the problem, we have to identify that, yes, there is indeed a problem on this earth. It is the limitation of freedoms in general. It is the limitation of morality, it's, it, which goes right alongside with freedom due to the law of freedom in natural law. It is, um, it is the combined aspects of all that is denatured that has been manifesting. And if we wake up to the fact that, well, there is um, the flip side to that, and that there could be one opposing agenda to that of their agenda, which calls for more control, it would be then disintegration from that system. And how do you get individuals to disintegrate? Well, they have to understand that system and understand how to free themselves. They have to understand who they are as human beings innately and the world that they live in. So it's knowing you and knowing the law. So there's a part about knowing yourself as well. And I said, remember, when you asked me the question, well, if somebody thinks about all this being chaos, well, I said that to some level it's projection um, because themselves are part of this process. Uh, the natural law is here for you um, and all individuals, uh, but it's always present. And the reason why it's put in such a fashion, again, the format is for individuals to understand it, interpret it, and then bring it into their lives. Um, however, by itself, it will always continuously act. So it's, again, a matter of choice. 
So do you choose to live in this natural world or this technocratic world? You will have no choice if you don't teach other individuals uh, th that natural world because you can only exist in that state of illusionary mind of, wow, I live in this unicorn reality. Um, <laughs> but for so long until you actually face the real oppression that is going on all around you. So it's about bringing that truth to others to help create that reality that is necessary for the world. And if it's of the, the necessary world and it's of the intended world, then it will work with you, essentially. Um, you're working with the natural forces at work. And that's why learning the law is essential to the process. So that way your actions aren't um, causing more problems. And that way you understand where your actions lead. Uh, what you're attracting, right? The energies you're giving off, the vibrations, so forth. So it's a process of that. And so I can't give a direct answer. Are we moving toward technocratic or not? It depends on the individual. So it depends on you, the listener. It depends on me. It depends on you and how much we share this knowledge with other individuals. And that's why nature is the answer is the full-fledged operation to sort of do this. And because it doesn't exist um, in today's manifested world, it doesn't exist. Um, there's no movement like this uh, in trying to bring the natural law to individuals. There's no movement that's trying to um, help understand these universal ideas um, in the exact fashion that it, it is displayed, where we're messengers and we're simply all here to educate one another. Um, it is of moral obligation for me to create this and to share it with others. And if this is really the only blueprint that will allow us to save ourselves then we have to understand that this is probably one thing we have to really embark ourselves on as a journey wise during um, our, our process of awakening. And sadly, I wouldn't like to say that it is our only solution, but uh, from the looks of it, um, from my own you know, journey and exploration, it sort of is, uh, only because there is no other movement that is based around these universal ideas. You know, and it's surprising to me, I wouldn't wanna say that, and the same thing Mark Passio says when, it, when he talks about his natural law. He wishes there were other teachers. He wishes there were other people sharing this knowledge. It's universal. It's all around us. Why isn't it being shared? But it's simple. It's because that suppression of such is what keeps the control systems in control. So they wouldn't want a movement, a truly grassroots movement like this. You know, all the movements that they want are controlled for their agendas and to create the illusion of choice and freedom and so forth. But this is actually grassroots, which is why I got to put the effort into trying to share with others what this is really about. But it's about you. We all are this movement. It's not about me. It's not about any one individual. It's about all of us together. And if we all realize these universal truths and principles, that website, Nita.one, is here for all of us. It's here for you. It's here for me. It's here for anybody who wants to share with others the universal ideas that are here to unite around. So that's what Nature is the Answer is in its entirety. And through the course of this podcast, you've probably heard me connecting to nature many times. And of <laughs> course, I may use that word perhaps too often. But it's because and it will grow of necessity, that word being if a, techno a technocratic state grows. Um, if humans are replaced by robots and all these other speculations we have, um, you know, of transhumanism and um, microchipping and trying to replace every aspect of human nature as we know it, then yes, it's going to become a very worthy message in time. And this is only just the birth of the message, but the message is also relevant now. And just give it a couple years and it could be even more relevant but that would scare me. I want to see this message get out to the public um, as soon as possible, because who wouldn't want to see a world more free, more loving and more of nature? Right on. And you know, what I've come to understand too: people who get weirded out by using the word nature so often. I, what I would say to them is just, you know, um, what is a natural world, a world based in truth and reality? Honestly, anything unnatural is typically un not true you know mm -hmm. if you if you really boil it down to this to the base whatever anything that's unnatural is typically distorted from um harmony harmony distorted from truth distorted from reality um love 
So yeah, man. Exactly. Um, that was awesome. That was really good. That was super uh, jam packed with information. But uh, I would love to have you on again, and I just can't thank you enough. And uh, if you'd like to be on again, maybe we could think of another topic. But uh, well, I appreciate it. And if people have questions, I encourage them to ask it as well, and to contact me and, and look at my own personal works. If you're interested, it's not on the website for the very reason that the whole website is about all of us. So I produce content of my own. I encourage other people to create content. The creativity is really what's going to matter here in bringing these messages to other individuals. Uh, and, you know, our human nature relies on that free will input. If you combine free will with natural law, what do you get? The truth. You have the deterministic and the random component of the left and the right brain if you, you study go. brain chemistry. So there needs to be that human input into the matter, and there needs to be numbers for this great work to happen. Otherwise, the natural law will not get out there, even though it is intended of the world. Yeah. It's a battle, folks. It's a, it really is a battle. It's a straight up battle. It's a true battle. battle. It's, a, it's, it's a battle. We need strength in numbers. Uh, honestly, we need strength in numbers, um, but it's not, you know, in violence and, uh, you mm -hmm. know, base nature, animalistic mindsets, you know, golems, if you will. It's just straight up a bunch of Gandalfs, but it's normal. This is normal That's stuff. Right. It's not mystical. It's not uh, new agey. It's just reality. It's true. That's right. You can love. learn from Gandhi, right? Look at Gandhi, nonviolent resistance, taught about loving one another. Pretty simple, simple ideas not much harder than it was than it is and it started with the resistance of the salt tax i believe it was in, in india and then from there everything else started to come with it they resisted the the british and they took control of their own country but if we do this now and for the whole world and realize where human freedoms truly live because india is you know just going to become again corrupt as it was we will understand that if we want to end total corruption and total unsustainability the most sustainability will be with uh, the natural world, which always seeks sustainability. Just look around you. Everything seeks a balance. Right on, man. Well, that was awesome. I uh, hope you have a good night, and uh, I'm sure I'll talk to you uh, very, very, very soon. Everybody go check out uh, Nita, Nita.1, the website, uh, Nature's the Answer. And uh, I, don't know if, I don't know if you don't see it yet, but it happens to be the case in my opinion, um, and it feels like reality to me. Thank you. I encourage individuals if they want to, um, you know, just look at the resources. If they want to learn more, I have plenty of stuff on the advanced tab. If they're unsure about any of the intentions I have, you can go to the disclaimers tab. I have perspective documentaries. I even have step-by-step -step lists about how things will manifest in time. Uh, I even send people free flags so that way they can get the message about by sparking questions for conversation. And it's quite that simple. You be the change that you want to see in the world. That's why I, I mentioned Gandhi. And we have to learn from all of those of the past. And if we understand that the natural law is one of those ancient past principles, we're just really just living our ancestors and learning from them. And they are within us. Uh, we have that strength, that ability to build structures day on night, 24 hours. And the structure we need to build today is the structure of truth and love. And that's going to start with open-hearted conversations with one another to build this, what is called, you know, that great work that has to be done. It, it's, a, it's something that does require effort, but you will see it and you will want to do it when you really understand this information. If you don't understand this information yet, you're not going to have perhaps that motivation and inspiration to go out there and do it. Uh, but when you understand it and realize how important it is for yourself, which I encourage you do and not to believe anything that I said, then you will have more investment in it. And that's why I also encourage you to create for yourself and create information based on the information that I present on the website. You know, recreate the logo, recreate the stuff. Have personal investment into it. It's about you. It's about all of us. And we need to take the power back where it belongs. Yeah, man. Power is Thank within you. all of us. Um, Thank you. My name is Corey Angelot. Yeah. <laughs> so if anybody wants to look me up, it's Corey Nature is the answer on uh, YouTube right to you on a bit shoot right on, i man. appreciate it for everything man yeah of course it was great and uh, we'll talk soon thanks thank you how about that everybody that was awesome uh big up to Corey. that was a great conversation man 
um, natural law is just uh, a great way to describe inherent principles and morality on paper and describe it to everybody. And he really knows his stuff and he's really integrated the knowledge. He's integrated the knowledge. He's integrated the work um, into the core of his being and he's embodied it and now he's teaching it and doing doing a great job do, doing so. So uh, big up to you, dude. Thanks for being on the show, brother. I appreciate it. And if you liked that, um, yeah, stay tuned for more. We'll be back with more segments. We'll, con- we'll continue to do trilogies of different topics. Um, we'll be div- delving into more esoteric, spiritual, um, high tier, and conceptual knowledge on the show. And we'll still have more grounded topics coming through. Um, but uh, I just hope everybody's doing great. You know, uh, you are love, you're sovereign, you're powerful, and it's always been at the core of your being under whatever distortion has been coding yourself since birth. Um, Yes, check out the Patreon if you want to join the discussion. Uh, We can talk about whatever, nothing's taboo, no malevolence, no porn, no gore, no fools, only the real ones. So um, thank you everybody. Hails, I appreciate it. And any energetic support is welcome make sure to check out the instagram and stay blessed pay attention